What's up? Now you're ready. Well, Chase, give me the feel. I mean, you wanted to get back to the big show, and then you, you get back to the big show, and there's nobody here. I mean, what? Yeah, we're here. It don't matter. I can feel, I can feel the love all the way back from Mississippi. It don't, there don't need to be a fucking soul in that seat. We're here. I like it. Well, give me, well I wonder because, you know, normally you, you would have the experience of being here, right? But this is different than anybody's ever experienced. So, I mean, did your UFC experience help you tonight in your nerves and your comfort level, or was this so different that it was like a brand new experience. It's weird, man. It, it, you, it's weird every time. It doesn't matter. There, it, it could be a million people out there. There could be nobody out there. It could, it's a, it's a freaking fight. So, uh, you, it's weird. You know what I mean? It's strange. It's a strange thing that we do. And sometimes I don't know why the hell I do it. I mean, I do know why. It's for moments like this. But it, I mean, going out there, it's, it doesn't matter who's out there. You're gonna get those emotions. Um, I will say this, with there not being anybody in the crowd, the one thing I w did enjoy, um, as a fighter in those moments of exchanges, you know the crowds will start cheering and they'll get real loud or they'll start booing or whatever. Well, that really affects your heart rate as a fighter, whether you want it to or not. And so that affects your breathing and in return that affects your cardio and in return that affects how fast you get uh, exhausted. So there in, those, the, you know, in that quiet arena, um, you kind of got to settle in, and um, it was almost like a, a, a sparring match or, or, or a tryout or something like that. So that was pretty cool about that, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's... Well, I was going to ask you, I mean, you, you did, it was apparent how incredibly comfortable you were in there tonight. Do you think that had a lot to do with it, or is this maybe some maturity from, you know, your time away or some things that you've changed? Why, why were you so comfortable tonight? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of everything that you just uh, keyed in on there. Um, Maturity is definitely one of them. Um, just not letting the situation get the best of you. Um, seeing, seeing, seeing it is as it is. You know, I mean, seeing things for what they are. You know, not building them up to something so massive that you know you can't handle it mentally. Um, and and kind of what I mean by that is, um, it's a, it's, it's a, all it is is a glorified sparring match, and you got to go out there and treat it as such. You know, don't let your emotions get in the way. And that's what I kind of try to do is, um, from the beginning of walking out to getting in the cage. You know, I'll just try to put myself mentally in the spot that I'm just in the gym, and this guy just came in, and we're about to, you know, get a little sparring. So that really kind of kept my heart right down. So, uh, and I had to, man. I mean, I freaking had to. I got the call six days ago, last Saturday. You know, so I had. What, seven days from the moment he called me till I left to work at the fire station, train, do my sports performance training with my athletes, and then train myself, do all this USADA bull crap, re-sign all the contracts, and do my eye exam, my blood work, and my physical in six fucking days. So I was like, I better go out there and not blow my wad because you know what I mean? Like, this, that's it. I haven't, that's the first time I put my hands on anybody in two fucking months. That's it. I haven't done any sparring, nothing. So, uh, you know, the first round was a little bit rusty. I got hit more than I'd like to, but I, you know, made the adjustments and then uh, got the win. So. Well, it was a phenomenal performance. So Interesting fact. You want to know something? Yes. May 13th, three years ago, this exact day, I beat Rashad Coulter for the first time. Well, for the first UFC win, my first UFC win, and fight of the night, stand and elbow finish. Three years later, May 13th, my first win back, stand and elbow finish. Isn't that weird? It is weird. That is weird. You gotta that book you on May 13th every year. It, the dude just told me back there that I'm tied for the record for m most stand and elbow finishes in the UFC. I mean, it's only two, but fuck, it's a record. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah. listen, it was a fantastic performance, and it's. Fantastic performance now on the mic too, but what's what's next for you, man? What, what's the plan? Man, it's a completely different approach this time, man. I'm not taking any more short notice fights. I mean, I know I took this one, but that was just to get in, but I mean it this time. No more fucking short notice fights. I'm going to buckle down and train like I need to. I'm going to get the opponents that I need. You know, I'm not going to worry about being a company man. I'm going to take care of myself, you know? Um, last time I had seven fights in the UFC, six of them were on short notice. Look at the competition that I fought. They used me as a fucking gatekeeper, okay? There was nobody easy that I, that I lost to, nobody. Shamil, Walt, Justin Willis, Justin, all guys that are in the top 10, top 15. So, um, 
you know, it's 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 a, it's completely different this time. I'm you know reborn again. I'm back, and it's uh, it's time to make a statement. Chase, was it uh, was it nice to punish someone while wearing gloves this time? Yeah, that was nice. I mean, I like bare knuckle. Like I can, you know what I mean. Like when you hit somebody, you know you fucking hit them. You like you feel it. It's like, I don't know. You ever like, I don't know. I can't really explain it to you. But it's, I mean, yeah, it was different. I mean, I could throw with a little bit more recklessness. I guess that's kind of why my hand is freaking killing me right now. But, um, you know, bare knuckle, you kind of got to pick your shots, be a little bit more poised, which, you know, that obviously helps too. You know, my boxing's obviously increased. Uh, my head movement there, a little bit more rhythm, can take the angles I want to take. Um, so that little stint with bare knuckle is just added to the game. Add to my game, so I'm really comfortable with my hands. You mentioned, you know, you had to work at the fire station and then get all this ready. The heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic, has come under a little bit of criticism that he's not prepared to fight because he's got to work with this pandemic and he doesn't feel like he can get pre properly prepared. Do you think he deserves that criticism or do you think he should be allowed to just focus on his community? Rather? No, he should focus on his community. Fuck them. They're not, whoever's giving him that criticism, they're not doing what, what that guy has to go out there and do, you know what I mean? Like, that's... You know what I mean? I took this fight because I wasn't in the UFC. I needed the opportunity. Now, if I was already signed with the UFC and I hadn't been training or anything, no, I'm not going to take the damn fight. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, he's doing what he needs to do. He's out there on the front lines, you know what I mean, you know, helping these people and during this pandemic. So if that's what he wants to do, then that's what he wants to do, and people should just shut their fucking mouth. Just, uh, one quick one right here. Uh, you said you're, you, there was no crowd so you could keep your heart rate low, but could you hear the commentators out there during your fight? A lot of fighters on Saturday could hear them and they would use uh -huh. that to their advantage. Uh, I wasn't listening to any, um, I didn't really, you know, I, I, I heard uh, Daniel a couple times, but he was not really instructions really. It was just like, oh, he landed a big shot here. Oh, he landed one here. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I did. So we went back to that. It was, you know, it was a little bit of a confidence boost from my life. But I key into my coaches more than anything, you know what I mean? So Could you hear his corner? Uh, yeah, we're using code a little bit. I mean, I'm not worried about it. They were, you know, saying things like, well, you know, watch for the hurricane or it comes a hurricane or something. I'm thinking he was just saying, you know, I think the hurricane was just like the little flurry he kept trying to throw, you know, the three, two, three, whatever it was. I have to go back and watch film, but yeah. Those are a good group of guys over there, by the way, four ounce fight cub, so. Is that it? All right, cool, see y'all later.